What was that? Why? <laughs> you hear that, fellas? She wants to know why. Well, let me ask you a question. Why does there have to be a why? Maybe you're just a pawn of ours in some intricate plot we cooked up, and this was all a part of our elaborate scheme. Or, maybe we just saw that preem piece of ass of yours and figured, why not? You see, the why doesn't really matter. What matters, uh uh, keep those pretty eyes of yours on mine, sweetie. What matters is that I'll always be a part of you now. You're marked, branded. A part of me's even thinking we ought to just make it official and ink my name on that sweet ass of yours. Do it, Bishop. We still got time. No. Like I said, I've already made my mark on her. Ain't that right, sweetie? Anyone you ever kiss will be tasting my cock. Anyone going down on that cute pussy of yours will be cleaning up after me. And most of all, no one will ever make you feel as good as I did. Well, as good as we did. By the way, you could have just said thank you. In fact, seeing as how we still got a few minutes left, why don't you thank me one last time? Get on your knees. I awoke in silence, my eyes snapping open and darting about. It was dark, and the only sound I could hear was the faint snoring coming from the bedroom. My stomach was still unsettled, but not queasy enough to the point where I thought I would puke, but my body was still coated in a thick layer of sweat. I rested a hand on my abdomen, ignoring the way my shirt stuck to my skin. Was this the brand he'd talked about? I had to know. I checked the time on my hollow. It was just past midnight. Being as quiet as I could, I rose from the couch and tiptoed toward the door. I stopped at the counter and carefully lifted my keys wincing when the metal keyring clanked against its surface, but the snoring continued. I slipped on my shoes and left the apartment. The night air was cool and felt soothing against my skin. It was the first time I had been outside in nearly a week, but I didn't have time to enjoy it as I scurried toward my van and set off for my destination. The convenience store we frequented was less than a mile away, and it only took a couple of minutes before I pulled into the lot and parked. It was a small establishment, filled with the usual assortment of smokes and liquors, as well as a smattering of food and other necessities. Although I never had a reason to check for pregnancy kits before, there was an aisle near the back that was filled with a plethora of must-haves for a fun night out, as well as the morning after. The only vehicle in sight was a beat-up Galena parked near the side of the building. I spotted the attendant inside, idly picking at his nose behind the counter. Even though he'd worked there for years, there was little chance he'd recognize me, and even less of a chance he'd give a shit what I was searching for. I quickly stepped out of my van and walked to the entrance. A pleasant jingle greeted me as the door opened, drawing the attention of the attendant who quickly jerked his hand away from his nostrils. He gave me a curt nod, which I returned before heading toward the back of the store. There was much more on display than I remembered. I passed row after row of vibrators, cock rings, and crops, all of which were of the discount variety and not something anyone serious about the craft would ever consider buying. The triple X scream sheets were next. Images of nude men and women danced lewdly on their covers. I sped up when a series of loud moans suddenly broke out next to me. Why did they always have the volume turned up so loud on those fucking things? I focused on a long row of boxes that stretched toward the end cap. Condoms, lubes. Fuck, where were they? I'd nearly given up when I spotted a small display of cartons near the bottom with the words pregnancy test written in small white letters upon them. I knelt to examine them and lamented that there were only two varieties offered, though I couldn't tell the difference between them. As far as I could tell, both kits involved me pissing on a tip and getting results back in a few minutes. And then I would know. Maybe it would be better to simply wait. After all, if I was simply late, 
That alone would give me my answer. But I'd already snuck out and come all this way. I snatched one of the boxes off the shelf, opting for the one with the most words printed on it, and made a beeline for the register. Waiting wasn't an option. I was well aware how fucked up my mindset was becoming, and V... I couldn't hold her off much longer. God, if it was positive, how the fuck was I supposed to tell her? Where would I start? As expected, the dude behind the counter didn't look me in the eye as I checked out. At least, I didn't think he was. I kept my head lowered and rushed out the door as soon as the transaction was completed, waving off his attempt to bag my purchase. The drive home took twice as long, though I knew it was because my foot was barely pushing against the gas pedal. I was torn, equally desperate to know and to remain oblivious to what might be happening inside my body. By the time I parked in my usual spot outside the apartment, my heart was threatening to burst from my chest. I rested my head on the wheel and closed my eyes. <sighs> Fuck. I couldn't stay here forever, no matter how much I wanted to. Heaving a sigh, I threw the door open and began the arduous trek upstairs. Never before had the front door filled me with such dread as it did now, and when it opened, I felt myself becoming lightheaded and had to steady myself against the wall as I shuffled inside. I stepped into the bathroom and closed the door behind me, but my hands were shaking and I fumbled with the box, dropping it to the floor with a loud flop. I hissed under my breath and listened intently for some sign of V, though all I heard was blood rushing in my ears. When I was confident I hadn't woken her up, I pried the box open and emptied the contents onto the sink. It was more complicated than I thought it would be. Wasn't I just supposed to piss on the stick? The tiny sheet of instructions was hard to read, but I squinted and followed along, my stomach dropping when I realized I'd need to pee into a cup again. I could try to grab one from the kitchen, but with my luck, I'd knock something over, or worse, drop it and break it. As gross as it was, the glass I used to wash my mouth out would have to do. For the second time in as many months, I pulled my sweatpants down, sat on the toilet, and filled a container with my own urine. My lips curled in disgust as a few hot droplets spilled onto my hand. After wiping it dry and pulling my pants back up, I set the glass back on the sink and washed my hands. Now I understood what I was supposed to do. A tiny dropper had been included. I picked it up and squeezed the aspirator before dipping it into my pee and releasing the pressure, allowing it to fill. The directions said that only a few drops needed to be placed on the test region of the stick, but it was a bitch trying to get my hand to hold steady and I had to brace my arm as I squeezed three drops where I was instructed to. The door suddenly opened. In a panic, I spun on my heels and tried to swipe the kid out of sight before V could see it. But I missed. The back of my hand brushed against the glass and sent it flying off the sink. It shattered, splaying yellow piss across the floor. I was paralyzed eyes as wide as saucers. My breath caught in my throat as I watched V's eyes dart about the scene in confusion, eventually coming to a stop on the empty box. She squinted, then looked back at me. Judy? Think, Judy. You shine when you're under pressure, and there's a brilliant lie to be discovered if you can find it, but you need to hurry. Her eyes are filling with shock and fear. Hurry, Judy. A pathetic sound creaked from my throat. Hurry! Right foot, left foot, lie. Why couldn't I think of something to say? Why was this happening? Right, right foot. Judy, what are you doing? I, I, uh. V closed the distance between us, ignoring the warm liquid she was stepping in and lifted the box off the sink. A pregnancy test? Her eyes snapped back to mine. What are you doing with this? I felt even more trapped now than when I had woken up tied to that fucking chair. There was no way out, and a brutally plain choice had literally just been laid at my feet. The lie. I cheated. I'm sorry, V. I was fucked up on shit, didn't realize what was happening until it was too late. I'm so ashamed of myself. Please, please don't hold this against me. Or... 
the truth, which was finally spilled out of me. I just... I had a run-in a few weeks back and needed to get checked out. So this was what it felt like. Ever since the rape, I'd played this conversation out in my head dozens of times, trying to imagine all the ways it might go. To imagine how it would feel to shatter not only my life, but V's as well. A sudden flash of heat surged through my chest, sending me staggering backwards. I didn't want to look at her, didn't want to see what I had done. Judy, V whispered in horror, nearly hyperventilating. Were, were you? Oh, fuck, no, please, no. Judy. I couldn't answer her. I'd already inflicted enough pain. J J Judy? V was choking back sobs now. Were you raped? I looked toward the empty tub, searching for something, anything I could focus on except V. A hand entered my field of vision, reaching out to me. I recoiled and stepped away, backing myself into the corner. Don't cry. Don't add to it. Do something right for once but I couldn't stop my chin from trembling as tears burned their way into my eyes. This wasn't how things were supposed to go. Tell me, V begged, unable to meet her gaze as I ripped out the last of her soul. I nodded solemnly. Oh, fuck. I, I knew something, and you didn't... Why? Fuck, why? An anguished cry escaped her lips. It was enough to force a tear down my cheek, one which I didn't have the strength to wipe away. But I finally managed to look at her, even as I fought back the lump rising in my throat. Every time I'd envisioned this moment, I couldn't help but picture the devastation and pain that would appear on her face when I told her. It had been a potent image, one which had motivated me to stay silent, but it wasn't even close to reality. She was clutching the back of her head as though her life depended on it. Her face had turned a deep shade of red, contrasting with her blue eyes which were soaked with tears. A thin series of white lines traced down her cheeks, probably from having raked her nails over them. Shit, I had seen her cry before, but this was different. Judy, V's voice croaked from her throat. Wh when did this happen? Why didn't you tell me? I was at a loss for words. Why hadn't I told her? Was it because I'd feared this moment? Had I been trying to protect her all along from this? To protect myself? I couldn't remember. V, why didn't you tell me? Because it wasn't that big of a deal. Really, I'm fine, V. V stared back at me incredulously which made sense, since I couldn't even believe what I'd just said. I was a mox, someone who'd fought tooth and nail to help victims and empower them. And here I was, passing off my own assault like it was nothing more than a minor inconvenience, one which I'd nearly forgotten. What the fuck are you saying? V waved her hands wildly in the air. Of course it's a big deal, Jesus Christ! She reached for me again, but suddenly stopped. How could you have kept this from me for so long? I knew something was wrong. I'd been seeing it for fucking weeks. V, please don't do this. Do what? Do you hear yourself? You, you lied to me all this time. Why? I don't know anymore, V. Stop asking me that fucking question. Why did you tell me? V sobbed. I love you. You, you could have trusted me. And you didn't. The truth had finally been laid bare for both of us to see as if it had been there all along. She was right. I hadn't trusted her. She was an absolute wreck, still standing somehow, still saying those three words I didn't deserve to hear. But it was too late. Now she knew she couldn't trust me. Nothing between us would ever be the same again.
every minute of every hour of every day, she would question if I was being truthful with her. And I deserved that. But she didn't. She deserved someone who would be open, vulnerable. Someone who trusted her. Someone who wasn't me. I'm sorry, V. You'll understand one day. My gaze hardened and I crossed my arms over my chest. Didn't tell you because I didn't want you blaming yourself. What? If this was what it took to get her as far away from me as possible, then I was determined to do it. I braced myself, ignoring the guilt stabbing at my heart. They grabbed me outside of Lizzie's. They? Shit, Judy, how many? Nine, I replied plainly, allowing her mind to run wild with the possibilities before I continued. They grabbed me outside of Lizzie's a month or so back after a shift. A shift I never should have been working. V's brow narrowed as more tears spilled from her eyes. What do you mean? There was no going back after this. It would be over, but at least she would be free of me. I pushed away the conflict raging within me and grit my teeth. If this would be my goodbye to her, I had to mean it. I mean I never should have been there. Don't you fucking get it? If you hadn't sunk us and spent all those fucking eddies over the last year fueling your addiction, I wouldn't have been working there in the first place. Fuck. It hurt to say those words, which only made me feel even more disgusted with myself. Her face. Her eyes. The pain I felt was nothing compared to what I was doing to her. What I had to do to her. J Judy, it's your fucking fault, I screamed, pointing an accusing finger in her face. Your fault those assholes fucked me every way they could think of all fucking night long. Your fault I was drunk when I hit that car. Your fault I got hooked on those goddamn beauties you brought into this place. Your fault I've been dosing myself with ice just so I could fuck you. Your fault- S Stop, V pleaded. Your fault we're broke. Your fault my studio went under and Roxanne got killed. Your fault that Katie is getting turned out by the claws. Your fault I didn't puff enough lace last week so Rita could rail me the way Cindy used to. Your fault I pumped myself with as much shit as I possibly could a few days ago to try to get out of all this. Your fault I'm- I had glanced down at the pregnancy test, intending to snatch it off the counter and wag it in front of her face to emphasize the point when I stopped. A simple, red dash had appeared on the display. My chest was heaving as I looked back at V. Her mouth hung open, frozen in horror at the torrent of abuse I'd heaved at her. Had it been enough? What else was there? J Judy, V said, breathing in ragged gasps. I I'm so, I'm so sorry. I l love you. I love you. How could she still say that? But it was right there. The handle of the knife I'd driven into her heart. Perhaps one final twist was all it would take. Then she would finally see me for the monster I was and understand she could find someone better. I clenched my fists and trudged up every last ounce of bitterness I had in me. I don't love you, and that's your fault. Leave me the fuck alone. V staggered back, barely catching herself against the wall. She shook her head in disbelief. No, get out, get away from me. I surged forward, causing V to back out of the room and bump against the opposite wall. With the press of a button, I closed the door and locked it, like I should have done all along. Ignoring the persistent thumping of V's fists as she pounded against it. Judy. Her voice was muffled, but I could still make it out. Judy, please let me in. Please, Judy. I love you. Not knowing what else to do, I stepped around the shards of broken glass and grabbed a towel before climbing into the tub. I stuffed the cloth behind my head like a pillow and leaned back, closing my eyes. The position wasn't all that dissimilar to how I'd found Evelyn. V was still shouting and pounding on the door. I craned my neck to look at the tattoo under my breast. The words stared back, mocking me. I refuse to sink. Like everything else, it was a lie. I'd already sunk beneath the waves without uttering a single scream. 
and I was fine with that. But I wasn't going to drag V down with me. Years from now, she would look back upon this period of her life with nothing more than a vague sense of melancholy as someone else, someone more deserving, wrapped their arms around her, offering the love I never could. No, V. This is for your own good. I'm a monster.